Hey, welcome everybody to Hope For Our Times. And I have a wonderful guest today. I uh, can't wait to introduce him to you, obviously. If you've logged on, you already know who it is. But Mondo Gonzalez, at a young age, was called to be a pastor in Illinois, for all of you who are in the Illinois area. And he also attended a Moody Bible Institute. He served as a pastor for 16 years and has a graduate degree in biblical archaeology, which to me is rather cool. Uh, Mondo has been to Israel many times, and he's led as a, tour, uh, as a tour leader, guiding many people over the years to experience the spiritual wonder of visiting God's holy land. In addition, he's a director of the Psalm 19 Project, uh, using state-of-the-art astronomy equipment to scan and photograph the heavens in order to proclaim the glory of God uh, Mondo has also spent, check this out, five years writing the most extensive and user-friendly study guide ever written on C.S. Lewis's The Screwtape Letters. Uh, uh, listen, we're going to have a terrific time today as we also discuss uh, the plan that some of those that are out there have toward us and we need to be prepared because they don't plan good toward us. In fact, they plan some uh, pretty nefarious things. So, But we're going to have a great time today. Looking forward to all of our uh, time together. Please welcome Mondo. Mondo, great to have you join us. It's always great to be here. Uh, so, I, I mean, there's so many different things I want to start with, but I'm going to start with two pictures that I think will help every uh, sum up uh, some of the ideas of what's going on in the world right now that do uh, concern a lot of people when they look at this. And they look at these things and they say, this is what these people have for us. Uh, one of them is, uh, as we think of Jesus, it's Pilate. And uh, if you guys can pull up that picture that I sent you guys uh, regarding Pilate. Pilate did not want the truth. The people didn't want the truth is what I should really say. You guys got that picture? There it is. The crowd chose Barabbas, not because they liked him, but because they hated the truth. And I think that would be wise for us to keep that in mind. Indeed, that is how things work. We live in a world that does not want the truth. And then also, here's Kamala Harris, Vice President of the United States of America. Check this one out. This really sums up a lot of what's going on in the world right now, why we have problems. Can you guys pull up that other picture, please? There it is. Breaking. Kamala Harris launches nationwide tour to celebrate abortion. Uh, friends, there is trouble out there. Uh, you and I are uh, not wanted on this planet, but we're going to do something different right now. We're going to take out a little bit of time, and then we're going to get to some of the plans that are out here for us. And as we see everything coming together, I think we might even get to 12 different things that we are witnessing coming together. Um, but before we go there, quite frankly, Mondo, they have a plan for us. There, there's no doubt about it. They being the globalists. When we look at uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we have the teaching on the rapture or the harpazo. Paul then says, comfort one another with these words. And then right after that, he says, but when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction comes upon them, they shall not escape. Those are those who are left behind. And then we think of the they, we think of the globalists, these deep staters, they don't want us here. We're going to be gone from here. But God has a much greater plan for us. And I want to get to that before we get to the rest of what we're going to talk about, including the screw tape letters and uh, these 12 things, if we're able to get to all 12 of them today. Mondo, you have founded the Psalm 19 Project. Man, this is just such a great focus on God because this is where we need our focus to be. Um, what's the Psalm 19 Project? The Psalm 19 project is really the the dream, I would say, a, a culmination of, of human history in, in many ways, in that uh, by God's grace and the generosity of, of some donors, we have some state-of-the-art uh, astronomy equipment, observatory, and so we're just out taking pictures of God's glorious heavens that... You know, I think about Psalm 19, which is is the is the title, that, that the heavens declare the glory of God and, and the sky as above show his handiwork. This is something that he created on day four, Genesis 1, 16. He created all the stars. And I think about it that this is what he did last Wednesday. What'd you do, Tom? I mean, I mean, he, he trillions and trillions of of galaxies and stars, and yet really most of human history hasn't been able to 
to enjoy these. And, you know, there's a lot of comments about, well, NASA this and NASA that's all fake. And I go, well, okay, fine. I'm not here to defend NASA. I don't care about NASA. They're godless, whatever. But we can confirm that, you know, if Hubble telescope takes a picture of something, we'll show you a couple of pictures, but we go out there, show it. And it shows us just the majesty of God. And you know what, to me, it makes me feel small, which it should, but I'm already small. Okay. But <laughs> it also, it makes me realize how big God is in Psalm eight, David, same David says, when I look at the heavens, they're so magnificent, but who am I that you care about me? God cares about us. Yeah. You know, I, I we're going to show uh, these, a couple of these pictures that you were able to take. And by the way, Mondo mentioned uh, some people that have been able to donate some things. Hope for our times was able to donate uh, some telescopes for the Psalm 19 project. Yes. And we're just uh, thankful that we've been able to, uh, be, in, a, in a sense, I guess, partner with you in a very small way. But uh, these are pictures, folks, that uh, Mondo took. And it and there's so much to this, the Psalm 19 project uh, that, that I'm going to have them explain. Uh, but, okay, Mondo, what's that picture that we're looking at right now? This is the Orion Nebula that I took last Saturday night wow. and Sunday night. It's only, it's, it's less than four hours with our seven inch refractor. And you can just see, this is with the one shot color camera. So I'm not adding anything. I'm not doing anything else. This is the, the natural colors that you see uh, coming. If you go out there at night, 11 o'clock at night, look to the South, you'll see Orion. And this is what, this is what is there. It's just stunning. The, the, it's just amazing what God has created. That, that's amazing. So if you look at that, um, I was very much into astronomy a long time ago. I was also into astrology, but those are two completely different things. <laughs> that's before I got saved. But when you look at astronomy and you see the glory of God, when you look out in the sky, all you see is a light, like a, a white light, a blue mm -hmm. light. They look like all the stars. You get out this and you see, this is incredible that God has created these things. Um, I, I want to read a little bit more from Psalm 19 before we get to the next picture and some of the other things we want to talk about, because I really believe, Mondo, I, I so appreciate this because for me uh, to be able to keep, keep my mind fixed on how great God is, mm -hmm. especially when we look at the other things that are going on in the world, which we'll get to, but let's get focused on the Lord first. And so again, I think of this Psalm, you already quoted uh, verse one, the heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out throughout all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. In them, the Lord has set a tabernacle for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices like a strong man to run its race. It's rising is from one end of heaven, a circuit to the other end. There's nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord, testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. And then on from there. But it starts out with this incredible creation. And folks, what a great way, whenever you start a day, remember, as he describes here, the sun rising up, and we see it in the morning. We have the different sunrises and sunsets. But we're going to show you another picture now that Mondo also took uh, just the other day, and, and I'll have him explain this one. Look at that. That is so cool. That is amazing, God's creation. This, this, is, this is the Andromeda galaxy, which uh, astronomers will say is about 2 million light years away. You can actually see, again, both both the Orion Nebula we just saw in this, you can see with the naked eye, it's a little smudge in the sky. But when you when you take a long term exposure photograph, this was 13 hours, I just opened up the camera, let it sit there, tracked it all night long for a couple different days. And then you you realize all the photons, these are very, very dim because they're far away. But if we allow the telescope to, to bring in there and collect all this light, this is what is actually there. It just and it's been hidden again from from human history for all of human history until the last generation. We're so blessed to see these things and go, man, God, this is, God, he's an artist. It's just stunning. This, this is, so, okay, so did you say this was 2 million light years away or 200 million? 2 million light years two, away. It's actually two the million, closest galaxy to us. It's, it's yeah. what? 
One of the closest galaxies this to us. This was the closest, two million light years away. So for, just to understand, when God says of ex, the, the span of his hand is the universe, <laughs> you start looking at this, you go, two million light years. So that is the speed of light at 186,000 miles per second times all those seconds for two million years. And that's how far away this galaxy is. It's to me, these are the things that are, are stunning. And this particular galaxy, you know, has one trillion stars in it, where the wow. Milky Way has about 300 billion. So, I mean, God just, again, this is what he just did on a Wednesday. He just created it all on a Wednesday all right. afternoon. <laughs> and it, it's humbling, but it also shows us that here we are, we're, we're talking about difficult times, right? Yeah. But in the midst of it, we're talking about the hope for our times. But the reason why is God says, look, if I did all this and I have it all under control, I've done it perfectly, then in the midst of whatever trial this world is going to face, we have tremendous comfort that God's power is unlimited, his knowledge is unlimited, and his care and his concern for us also is infinite. It's just amazing when we, we think, as you, you mentioned, how small we really are. Uh, I, I look at, at these things, I just love the perspective that something like this will give a person and realize mm -hmm. that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And you see the greatness of just his creation. And I mean, imagine what heaven is going to be like. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, we think of the streets of heaven paved with gold that's so pure, it's like transparent glass. I mean, God... It, God's just giving us an understanding of the, the most valuable things on, here on earth. God says, my gold is way more valuable than what you have on earth, and I use it for asphalt up here. You know, <laughs> and, and you, you look at this, and you look at these pictures. I love it. What, what, what exactly do you do with the Psalm 19 project? Obviously, declare the glory of God. You're able to talk about these things. Uh, what, what do you do with it? Some of the other things that we've been doing is like uh, I've done uh, several presentations, DVDs. You know, we, we we created a calendar for people so they can see the, the images that we've taken and with scripture verses just to encourage them. Because as life goes on, again, as we see the difficulties coming, uh, God wants us to realize how small we are but also how dependent we are on his magnificence. And so the other thing that we've been able to do is, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be able to track some of the prophetic uh, things that people are saying as it relates to Apophis, the asteroid that, that you know, has been said it's going to strike the Earth. And so I, I did track it um, a while ago. It's really, really small, so there's nothing really to see. But we've also been able to really just share some truth for evangelism because, you know, there are many, you know, we, we don't pick on flat Earth people, but I have brothers and sisters in the Lord that believe in the flat Earth, and we've been able to provide really some balance there because uh, many of them, like for example, they'll say Hubble's not real, the space telescope's not real, James Webb is not real, all the images are fake, and I'm like, I, I understand their goal, their goal is to try to win people to, to the gospel, but I say, hey, look, I, I took these images myself, this isn't CGI by any means, and whether they intend it or not, they're taking away from the glory of God by saying all of the space images are fake. Because they're not able to see, but you know, in their mind, they're going, that's not real. And you go, well, I, I took it, but don't you see how magnificent God is? And so in, in my mind, uh, not only do they often steal the glory of God, but they're stealing the application because God says many times, as high as the heavens are above the earth is how great my love is to you. Well, if they go, well, that's only 7,200 miles, uh, which, you know, in their, in their, yeah. in their portrait, I'm like, you know, you're talking two million light years, and we can, we know that by all the other reasons, parallax and other things. But the grandeur of God, they're missing out on that. And so we're trying to to help bring some balance to understanding the, the greatness of our God, and also how much He cares about us. Yeah, I, I love it. I just absolutely love it. I think it's wonderful. And yeah, re real quick, I mean, I have a lot more to ask you here. Um, I want to I want to get into screw tape letters for a few minutes about the devil and demons and then get to these 12 things, assuming we have enough time. But, but can you explain real quick for all of our viewers the difference between astrology and astronomy? Because some of them confuse the two, and they are totally not the same thing. 
although they both look at the stars, other than yes. that, they're not the same thing. Yeah, astronomy, biblical astronomy, we look at the heavens like David tells us to and God tells us to, and we recognize the magnificence of God, and we see that as a testimony of his creative powers and abilities, like Romans 1 tells us, the invisible attributes are clearly revealed, you know, his divine nature and his power by the things that were made. So the creation shows that astrology looks to the constellations and the stars and looks for guidance from those. We're not looking for guidance. We look at those and go, wow, that reflects God. And we look to the scripture to see guidance, uh, but they're looking to the stars and how they're aligned and which month you were born. And so to me, it's, this is the, the, the warnings that you have in the old Testament about looking to the hosts of heaven for your spiritual guidance. That's con very much condemned because, uh, God is the creator. We're looking to the ones beyond the creation. We're looking to the creator beyond his creation for guidance. They're looking to the creation itself for guidance. Yeah. Uh, excellent way of putting it. Also, even when you look at Psalm 19, listen, everybody, I encourage you to read it. It is one of the most uh, uplifting and focused uh, passages you can have when God takes us from his creation, the things that he has done. He even talks about the sun running its circuit and, and all these different dynamics. But then he goes into the law of God and the word of the Lord and being able to trust him. But it's interesting. He starts with his creation. Look at how incredible it is. You know, you think of Abraham looking at the stars. God says, man, there's too many for you to number. Abraham, the stars are not fake. These things are, are, are yeah. Um, the, with um, screw tape letters, you wrote a book, a study guide on the screw tape letters. And uh, and I think, it's, I wish we had it here in our store. Maybe next time we'll get it here in our store. But uh, can you just walk us through that, because I think it's really interesting for people, I think they would be engaged in it and real eye opener too. It, you know, it really is because, you know, C.S. Lewis wrote this in, in 1941 and he was, what he ultimately was writing about was human temptation, the psychology, if you want to use that phrase uh, of human temptation. And, and, you know, there are, you know, several dozen different topics that he that he addresses as it relates to, uh, again, human temptation. But what the other thing that's fascinating about it is that many of the things that he recognizes are alive and well today. He talks about social justice. He talks about wokeism. I mean, he talks about all these things that were really not, not too existent back in 1941. But when you come today, especially if, if anybody has watched the movie Nefarious. I'm not necessarily suggesting it, but if you have watched that, you realize how much we are living under the age of First Timothy 4.1, the doctrines of demons. And so people live in this world and they don't realize that what we hear from social media and the world in general, the world, the first John, uh, first John 4, the world speaks, the world listens to itself, its own humanistic philosophies, and in the screw tape letters, he's he's helping us to understand that you have this this worldly thought pattern, and you have the biblical thought pattern. And so my goal was to say, well, if the world's saying this, what's what does the Bible say about what they're saying? And then what's the solution? So I mean, I reference over a thousand different scriptures uh, addressing how to live life, how to, how to be sanctified. John 17, 17, Jesus said, uh, sanctify them by your truth for your word is truth and also to live by the word. So as, as the, here, there's a couple verses that speak second Corinthians 10, that we are to take every thought captive, right? To the obedience of Christ. So when the world speaks in a certain way and we're seeing all this stuff now in our culture, what does the scripture say? And ultimately that's what the screw tape letters study guide does. It takes these, these, um, these topics and it says, what does the Bible say? Yeah, uh, I, I love it. Is it screw tape? Is that uh, a study guide available at Prophecy Watchers? Yeah. Yeah, prophecywatchers.com. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I would encourage all of you to check it out. You're, you're going to be super blessed uh, by everything Mondo does. I know many of you already know him, uh, but check out his videos that he does, Prophecy Watchers. They have a YouTube channel. And also, before we get to the next thing, I want to start, see if we can unpack these 12 items in. 10 minutes. We'll see if we can. <laughs> uh, you have the Orlando Prophecy Summit that is coming up in, uh, yeah, just right behind you. There right it is. Right behind us. You can see it. You're going to be there. I'm going to be there. It's going to be a, a terrific time. And uh, I would encourage everybody to get registered for it. Go there. 
Um, what, what's going on with, with Orlando Prophecy Summit? Well, we have, um, I mean, as we know, Prophecy is unfolding at a breakneck speed. We have 18 speakers. Again, you're one of them, as well as many, most of, most everybody's favorite teachers are going to be there, which is, which is tremendous. And uh, we're just going to, we're trying to keep people updated. We're trying to pe- keep, pe- keep them encouraged. And ultimately, I mean, the, the name of your ministry, I mean, it goes long. We're trying to give them hope for the times that we're living in. And, and that really is the goal. It, it can be very discouraging, and that's not our goal. Our goal is to be help people who are prophecy watchers to be aware of what's happening, but also ultimately to 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 keep that hope in the return of the Lord in the rapture. But in the meantime, also uh, to be busy evangelizing to to rescue as many people as possible from the coming tribulation. And that's and also uh, you you see this too. We saw this when we went uh, abroad internationally. Sometimes people just need fellowship with like-minded individuals. And as we know, prophecy is not taught at many churches. And so that's one of the reasons we have the conferences instead of just having things virtual is to help people sit around, they have coffee together, they look in each other's eyes and they're like, we're not alone. Totally, you know, we really saw it when we were over there in the UK, Ireland and Scotland, then we went to Italy, but there was such a need for fellowship. And I, you know, I know people are watching from UK right now it will be later. Uh, we get, uh, like you, Mondo, we get uh, many people from uh, different parts of Africa, South Africa and elsewhere, even the Mideast, that contact us, uh, Canada, Australia. And by the way, we will be in Australia. Mondo's going to be with me. Uh, mm-hmm. Austra- there's going to be uh, several of us that are going to be there, Australia and uh, New Zealand. So if you're in that area, listen, Join us. You can check out the info at hopeforourtimes.com for that. But we need to strengthen one another. And we're getting to this place where with uh, we can tell that everything is tightening. Uh, yes. You know, as, as we look at where we're going to go over the next few minutes in our conversation, listen, these, these people out there, they have nefarious plans for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, just, you know, as you mentioned, we, we look at this. Listen, let's march forward. We can see the finish line. We're going to press toward the goal and encourage one another we need to. Uh, And we're going to get to know like-minded people. And I encourage you, uh, join us in the Orlando uh, Prophecy Summit. Um, The info is there, uh, prophecywatchers.com. I'm not sure if we have it on our website yet. If we don't, we will by the end of today. And um, uh, also for the, the, the Conference on the Sea that's coming up in June, if you want to join us there, we would love that. All right, Mondo, let's unpack 12 things. Now we only got seven minutes. Let's see what we can do. Um, you ready? And uh, you, have a, you have a book there by Steve Miller yep. from Harvest House. Yep. And I love the title of it. I wish we had yep. that in our store too. We could send people there. But you guys have that in your, in your store. So <laughs> you can go to prophecywatchers.com, pick up that book. It's Four Shadows. And then what's the subtitle of it? The four shadows are 12 mega clues that Jesus's return is nearer than ever. And this, this really has become a go-to book for me in the sense of looking at these 12 mega clues. Now, granted, there might be 50 or 60, but it's nice to have them in, in, in a small 12, you know, 12 part. I agree. 12 mega clues. We're going to go through them. I have 99 on my sheet, but those are ones (laughs) I came up with while I was just sitting here one day, but 12, let's, let's take it away. Let's start. Number one, we'll go through what we can. And, uh, Okay. The first chapter he talks about here is just there, really chapters one and two can go together, and that is the rise of globalism and the trends toward a one world government. I mean, we look around. Can over the last few years, I think twenty twenty as it relates to COVID and and just all that. We don't even need to get into details. But what we saw was the first time, really, I think, a global response to a chaotic environment. Oh. Uh, absolutely, a global response to a chaotic environment that I believe was invented. But yes. uh, uh, but I'll we'll leave <laughs> it there for just a minute. I want to get to number two here in just a second. But also a quick reminder for you too. I know we're talking about a lot today, but on New Year's Eve, uh, December 31 at 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, Brandon Holthouse is going to be joining me live and in person in Southern California. I hope that you can join us. It's going to be a terrific time um, he's, he's going to make the journey to be here in person. So hopeforourtimes.com, you can find that out on the events page there too. It's going to be terrific. Okay. Let's go back to number two, uh, take the number two. 
So we so we have if we think about the whether it's globalism or a one world government. You know, one of the things that are talked about here is networked technology, global corporations, uh, global groups like the WEF, World Economic Forum, the World Health Organization, of course, the United Nations, um, and then just the the global community. As we look around, it has become clear that you have these groups that are they have their their agenda, they have their their goals, and they hate nation states they hate individual nations they want a globalistic answer to everything and of, as you know as you said you, they're creating they have a desire to create chaos uh, in order to implement a solution whether it's climate chaos whether it's a health chaos the latest thing that we we, we see this uh really i would say this um posturing is cybersecurity a cyber attack there's a new movie on netflix i don't recommend it i watched it i don't recommend it um but they're 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 projecting what they're going to do because again they're going to create chaos so that they can come in with solutions based on fear yeah so that new movie must be the the obama movie yes <laughs> yeah yeah uh so yeah, yeah you look at these things they tell us uh in um october of 2019 event 201 Hey, this is what's coming, and guess what? It came. So we're constantly hearing this threat of a cyber issue, whether it be a collapse of banks or collapse, uh, electricity problem, uh, whatever it is, shutting down the internet or shutting down, uh, you know, just the whole. Uh, I mean, they can shut down almost anything they want. Uh, you know, they have how many different weapons are in mm -hmm. their. Uh, their their military. I'm not talking about physical military, but you start looking at them and you realize all the different weapons that they can use uh, from climate to, I, I, I even look at this and um, wokeism as being a huge factor in mm -hmm. the brainwashing techniques that they have used in order to get, to manipulate the masses to the place where they will look to They'll look to government to have to uh, give them all their answers. When you ask people now, uh, they're trained, especially young people in school. They're trained not to think for themselves, and mm -hmm. in that process, they don't. Hence, they become prey to whatever they are told to do. What do you have for it numbers? So, yeah, go ahead. It, well, they say it's so true, and as as we look and we watch the way that again, this this um, basically. We call it a pandemic, which it certainly was, but it was a test case. It was to see uh, how, what what I think the community or the culture, especially in America, which is the, you know the, the currently largest superpower, uh, we're the we're the we're the greatest hindrance to tyranny because of our constitution. And so, watching the way that our culture responded out of fear to many of these of the lockdowns, and as you mentioned, not only wokeism, but the the uh, implementation. Let me give you an example. When, when the, for example, they they talked about uh, vaccines, and again, wh whatever you think about that, I don't want to get canceled. Whatever, but the point of the matter is this: uh, the government didn't have to do anything at first. The, and in fact, the Biden administration came out and said, "Well, well, that's not really a part of our. You know, we're not into that." But they didn't need to because then all of a sudden. All of the businesses, these great major Fortune 500 companies, began to require that of their workers, of their employees. Many times, you couldn't go into stores, and so what you see is it kind of emerging of the the globalist or or these global corporations being used by governments to implement their their dirty work. Uh, you could see this again not only with uh, now that uh, Twitter, of course, has been purchased by Elon Musk. It's now X. But the separate censorship of information uh, and 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 using the technology to control people, you couldn't go anywhere. Uh, again, many times you couldn't go into stores in many in many places like where you're at, you had to show uh, passports, digital IDs. those those are coming. All these things are coming. And, and we know it's coming, and it's going to be merged together between uh, these these oligarchs, these technocrats, uh, government corporations, and the government itself. Yeah. Uh, during that particular time, I had to drive to Los Angeles one day, and Los Angeles was nuts. You know, they just were. It was. Uh, and I had to drive there one day for a meeting, 
and I had to use the facilities. It's a long drive from my house. You know, I, I mean, I'm like, you know, okay, I'm gonna have to stop along the way. So I tried, I tried to go to a McDonald's and I even offered to buy a hamburger. They wouldn't let me in. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't wearing the proper attire, you know, mm-hmm. and they, they wouldn't let me in. I'm like, and I, all I could think of, you know, is when we think of you're not going to be able to buy or sell, we got a preview of coming attractions. Mm-hmm. Um, it was like a test, the, uh, a test run is what happened. Um, by the way, I, I want to encourage you all to, if you would, here's a, one really easy way to support Hope for Our Times and also Prophecy Watchers on our, on our video channels, our platforms. If you could like, subscribe, and share, absolutely free to be able to do those things. And it really helps us to be able to share the truth. And uh, uh, we greatly appreciate it. That's one way that you can partner with us. Greatest way you can partner with us is through prayer, because uh, we need a lot of uh, an awful lot of prayer. We're pressing forward. It is a spiritual battle. Uh, thank you, everyone. Okay, hey Mondo, um, you wrote an article two years ago now. Are the ten kings actually ten oligarchs? And, which is basically what you were alluding to. It wasn't mm-hmm. the government that had to do these things. It's these big corporations. And we see what the big corporations are still continuing to do. They're getting, they're like Pac-Man. They're getting bigger and bigger and bigger, eating up the small ones, uh, the, the banks, and right on down the list, the tech industry. We can see things developing, just as you said. Uh, people, everyone, you can get that article. Just Google it. Are the 10 kings actually 10 oligarchs? You think of Revelation chapter 17 and Daniel's mm-hmm. visions also. Um, and then uh, also we have... Um, uh, I want to ask you, what, what's number three on your list of 12? So it is the struggle to build a united European empire, you know, thinking about, as you mentioned, Daniel 2, the final fourth beast that has a worldwide domination, um, the spread of all invasive technology and surveillance at one world economy. I mean, you said it, Revelation 13, we know that, there's a political there. You have a political agenda there. You have a religious agenda and you have an economic ag- agenda, which involves technology. And so I, I found it fascinating that what we're watching now, th- th- this is, you're going to hear this, this phrase is going to appear a lot. And that is deep DPI digital public infrastructure, where these countries are seeking to, implement a a system and, and especially you, you, another thing that people can watch is go to 50in5.net 50 countries in five years they're trying to create open source information where countries can get on the bandwagon to to implement this digital public infrastructure which is going to handle uh information like again and ids as well as exchanges financial exchanges so those are the three things that come right out of revelation 13 it's amazing that when this b system arrives it has the ability to do all the things it said there and now within five years that's their goal is to have these 50 countries because what they're worried about or what they're concerned about is look at a country like ethiopia or zimbabwe or something and they're like well we're there maybe they're too poor well if the richer countries implement this then they can simply just pull just piggyback it along to all these smaller countries. And now all of them are brought into this worldwide system. So what Revelation 13 is says, we've talked about it. We've been conspiracy people for a long time, cashless society, digital society. Here we, here we are. I mean, <laughs> we're on the forefront of it. Uh, we, we absolutely are. Uh, it's kind of funny how it was only a few years ago when people were saying, you guys are all nuts. Now they still tell us we're nuts. They do, but, but we've been able to tell people the direction that things are going to go simply because the Bible told us this is what is going to happen. So hence, we have 12 different things. Mondo, you've only talked about three of them so far. What yeah. Can you give us, just run through the rest of them real quick? Yeah. So you have uh, number five is the progression to a one world economy. The number six, the descent into moral and spiritual corruption. Here we are. Uh, the pro- proliferation of deception. The assault on truth, in this case, biblical truth, or just truth in general. How do you get real data, real information? Uh, the increase of Christian persecution. The explosion of hostilities toward Israel and the Jewish people. Hello, right? No um, kidding. 
the preparations for a new temple in Jerusalem, inclu- including the, the red heifer preparations, and the form the forming of a coalition to destroy Israel. I mean, he wrote this book, you know, almost two years ago, and it's like prophecy because it is. It's prophetic. It is. It is prophecy. I imagine that uh, just as God said in Isaiah chapter 46, he tells us the end from the beginning <laughs> so that we would know. And I think of the words of Jesus in Matthew 24. He says, see, I've told you these things beforehand. Um, w- one of the most astounding things that I, I look at uh, is the rise of anti-Semitism or the exposure of it. Jan Markell and I talked a little bit about that yesterday. But Mondo, you've done a lot regarding the temple, and this wasn't one of our set questions to ask, mm-hmm. but you've looked at the, the coming temple um, and the red heifers. And, uh, you know, people, I think sometimes you can make too big of a deal of the red heifers, but sometimes too little, because the reality of it is, when you look at Daniel chapter 9, there, yep. there's obviously animal sacrifices that are taking place because the Antichrist brings an end to the animal sacrifices. So if that's the case, the red heifers are a big enough deal to be able to look at and say, hey, there is something to this. And then you look at that, you look at the building of the temple, but we look at the anti-Semitism in the world. How is it that you could see the, the coming temple being built when there's so many people that are so hateful towards Israel right now. I think I think this is where it comes back to this this covenant that you mentioned in Daniel 9 27 that is an agreement between the Antichrist and the many, which is Israel. Uh, clearly that's a reference to Israel in Daniel 11. So you have the phraseology there. And so the the aspect or the idea is um is it a peace agreement? You know, the Bible doesn't say specifically that's a peace agreement, but it is an agreement that is made. What what's the what's the uh the content of that agreement of that covenant? I tend to think it makes more in reference to the temple because of the context of, as you just mentioned in part B, uh, the second half of Daniel 9, 27, the the ceasing of of the sacrifices. So politically speaking, there's going to come a day where Israel does have a lot of anti-Semitism and it revolves around just their existence. But the Antichrist is going to step in and create a scenario where they're allowed to do this. In, in some sort of agreement. So when, does that mean the temple won't be built until the Antichrist? Not necessarily. We don't know. We just know that all of this is in preparation. We have a snapshot of prophetic truth. How we get there is is open to interpretation. We just know that it's going to happen. That's a great way of putting it. How we get there is open to interpretation. Some people are absolutely convinced they've got, the, they've got it all figured out. I, I've said this many times, Mondo, that when it comes to the prophecies regarding the first coming of Christ, yep. there's certain things that, the, the Bible says that we're prophecy, but there's no way somebody could have figured out every detail. Just one quick example is the Messiah be born in Bethlehem, he'd be called out of Egypt, and he'd be from Nazareth. Well, how could those three things be, and, and how could they come about? No, There's nobody who, that could have predicted, well, this guy named Caesar Augustus is going to <laughs> issue a decree that this young couple, Mary and Joseph, uh, by the way, she's going to be pregnant without having sex, and they're going to make their way to Bethlehem. And then this guy named Herod, he's going to want to kill all the Jewish boys, two years old and younger. So there's a vision that's going to come to Joseph to flee into Egypt. And then when Jesus is older, uh, Joseph's going to be told, hey, you can go back up. Oh, by the way, and go live in the land of Nazareth. You, mm-hmm. Nobody could have possibly known all of those details. There's no way. But God knew because he's God, and he had directed the events. And he told us those scriptures. That's only three. And yet when it comes to the first coming of Christ, there's well over a hundred. When it comes to the second coming of Christ, there's hundreds upon hundreds. So we know all of the things are going to happen exactly as God says, but we don't always know how. And uh, we we can speculate how, but man, we know there's going to be a global tracking. We know global government. We know a temple's going to be built. We know animal sacrifice is going to happen again. We know there's going to be a mark of the beast. We know all of these things. And we can start to see the hows coming together. And that's what gets us going, wow. Uh, Just like that book uh, by Steve Miller says. You guys have that book available also, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Available at prophecywatchers.com. Everybody check out the book. Um, And I would love to go over a lot more with Mondo 
but I cut them <laughs> off too much to be able to go over more. Mondo, it's great having you here today. Any final thoughts for everybody? You know, the final thoughts is as we as we get into more and more of this, I think 2024 is going to be far more serious than 23 and even 22. And I, I think we're, we're beyond the point of no return. We're not going back to Mayberry. There's no Mayberry anymore. There, there's no... It, there, there's no going back. We're, we're continuing going forward because the world powers and even the spiritual world, world powers, you know, Ephesians six, you know, are, are, are wrestle not against flesh and blood. They see the end approaching too, and the and the pro, the progress that they have made shows them that we're on the final run. But in the midst of that, you know what? I'm excited that we, you and I, and on all the other ministries, God has called us for these times. He's going to, he, he didn't call us because we're wonderful or we're smart or we're brave. He called us because he's going to equip us by his grace to stand strong and to call out and to expose this evil as we watch. That's why, again, going back, do we have hope? Absolutely. We have hope in our times because of the person of Jesus Christ, no different than the first century. He equipped them. Who, who were they? They were a bunch of nobodies. They were cowards. They ran. But once they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they changed the world. And that's really our goal. I think yours as well is to be a light and a witness as until as we see the day approaching, we continue to go. We're going to stay busy all the way until the end, until the Lord takes us home. Oh, amen. Thank you so much, Mondo. And by the way, everybody, the uh, organizer for the Australia conference that's coming up, he happens to be in the chat right now. So that's kind of cool. Mondo's going to be joining us in Australia. We'll be in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, uh, Mondo's going to be joining us. Kim Michael, Billy Crone, Brandon Holthouse, Pete Garcia, and myself. We're all going to be there in both uh, Australia and New Zealand. You can check out HopeForOurTimes.com for that. Also, the Orlando Prophecy Summit is coming um, in fact, we're going to be in, Aust in the land down under, and then about three or four weeks later, we're going to be in uh, the land up yonder over in Orlando, <laughs> in uh, Florida. So great things are coming, everybody. And uh, just as Mondo said, listen, this is why we get excited about these things. We, we are reminded of who Jesus is. We're going to run for the prize. Uh, we get to keep our eyes fixed on things above with all the things that Mondo was talking about, the Psalm 19 project. And we remember above all else that Jesus Christ saves us from our sins. God bless you, everybody. Please join me tomorrow. We have an app exclusive with Lee Brainerd. So it's going to be terrific. God bless y'all. See ya.